One of the many important concepts in electronic communication is understanding how mixers work and how harmonics of different signals will mix together. A great way to demonstrate this and to experiment is to use a mixer that is suitable for audio frequencies and then use a common audio frequency signal generator to provide those signals. In this case what we're doing is we're using the integrated circuit uh, by analog devices, the AD633. It's an analog multiplier which actually works really well as a signal mixer. And the student here has this all fabbed up on his breadboard. <clears throat> We've got a split power supply, a couple of 9 volt batteries there. We are using one ordinary signal generator for one of the signal sources. And then the Pico scope, which we're going to be using to measure the output, is also providing one of the other signals uh, through its arbitrary waveform generator. And so what we're doing here is taking a look at the Pico scope screen and to look at the spectrum display of the output of that mixer. The task that was given to my student here was to mix a 2 kilohertz sine wave signal with a 4 kilohertz sawtooth wave. Now a sawtooth wave has both even and odd harmonics. So the 4 kilohertz sawtooth wave will have a fundamental at 4 kilohertz and a second harmonic at 8 kilohertz, third harmonic at 12 kilohertz, fourth harmonic at 16 kilohertz, and so on. The sine wave, ideally at least, has a single peak at 2 kilohertz. If there's no distortion to it, that's all we would have. And then, of course, when we mix this together, what you're going to get is the sum and the difference between every combination of these harmonics. So the sum and difference between the 2 kilohertz and the 4 kilohertz, the sum and the difference between the 2 kilohertz and the 8 kilohertz, etc., etc. And so what my student did is he calculated all the expected harmonics coming out of the mixer, all the sums and differences, all those combinations. And so he predicted we have 2 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz. Now he calculated this two different times because he got 6 kilohertz from the sum of 2 and 4, but he also got 6 kilohertz as the difference between 2 and 8. And that's okay, they just overlap on the spectrum display. So he got these different um, uh, harmonic predictions, so 2 kilohertz, 6, 10 kilohertz, 14 kilohertz, 18 kilohertz, 22 kilohertz, 26, etc. And on our spectrum display, that's exactly what we have. So right now he's aligning his cursor with the first peak there, and we're at uh, 1.996 kilohertz. And of course we're just, you know, adjusted our, our analog signal generator as close as we could. So it's not going to perfectly be 2 kilohertz. On to the next peak, we have 6.016, so there's a 6 kilohertz peak. And the next peak right there, we have 10 kilohertz. There's our 10. And the next one should be 14. There we go, 14. Next one should be 18. There we go, 18 kilohertz right there. And next one after that should be 22. There's our 22 kilohertz right there. And then 26. Now, of course, these continue to go on because it's an infinite series <coughs> making up the sawtooth wave. And so these, uh, even an odd harmonic, simply gets smaller in amplitude as we go higher and higher in frequency. And you can see that on the display, the peaks on the spectrum start off fairly strong and they get weaker, weaker, weaker. But they actually go on pretty much forever. So, a great way to explore the concepts of harmonics and of signal mixing by using the analog device's multiplier, a fairly simple circuit, and some fairly simple math.